Coming up on today's show, a holiday camp used by generations of Salfordians is set to reopen. We find out more about Grand Greater Manchester's biggest pumpkin. And get your trunks on, Beswick has a brand new leisure centre. Lol. Good afternoon, this is Keys TV News. The new Metrolink line to Manchester Airport opened yesterday a year ahead of schedule. There are 15 new stops through South Manchester, including Withenshaw. Chancellor George, Os George Osborne travelled on at the line to mark its opening. The Chancellor was also in the city to agree a devolution deal with Greater Manchester's 10 councils. He announced yesterday that the area is to have an elected mayor, similar to Boris Johnson's role in London. Whoever is elected will control a £1 billion budget for transport, housing and skills training. This comes two years after voters rejected a mayor for the city of Manchester in a referendum. Eight fire crews were called to Blackburn Town Centre last night in what has now been classed as a major incident. The fire started after 6pm at a mill on Burley Street. 40 people were evacuated from a nearby retirement home. There are currently no reports of injury. The Jambutti camp, which was a holiday destination for generations of Salfordians, is set to reopen next year. The camp in North Wales was closed earlier this year after its £50,000 grant was cut by Salford Council. However, a high-profile campaign led by locals caused a U-turn on the decision in July. Now repairs have been made and the centre is looking for a new warden in time for its reopening in April 2015. With Bonfire Night Looming, our roving reporter Kate Troy got, has got a sparkling piece of advice from our fire service. In Manchester, a fire and rescue service is urging Bonfire Night revellers to attend organised events instead of holding their own firework celebrations. Firefighters across the country are taking industrial action and have been on strike since last Friday. The strike continues this evening. The four-day strike is in response to a dispute between the Fire Brigades Union and the government. So whether it's an organised display or your own personal sparkler at home, stay safe this bonfire night. Trafford got into the festive mood way before anyone else when it switched on its Christmas lights. A host of celebrities including X Factor stars Union J made an appearance at the Trafford Centre. Carly Foster reports. Christmas light switch ons. A chance for the entire community to come together and celebrate the start of the festive season. And this year, the Into Trafford Centre in Manchester has some of the biggest stars take to the stage. Tonight, people of Manchester have come together in their thousands to celebrate the festive spirit and to watch more than £1 million worth of decorations glow. The atmosphere is absolutely fantastic and I've just been hearing some of the biggest screams. I think Union J may have just arrived. It's cool to be able to perform and yeah, press we're honoured honor to be, t you know, Manchester's a massive, yeah. massive city, an iconic city in, in Britain, so to be doing it here is a great feeling and, yeah, we're very honoured to be here, so thank you for having us. X Factor's Chloe Jasmine, hit girl band Neon Jungle, Britain's Got Talent winner Paul Potts, also joined headline act Union J, who switched on the lights. It's my second trip here in a week, so um, <laughs> it, it's a great city. It's a very cosmopolitan city with many different sides to it. It just feels like a great privilege to be here. We're super excited actually. The fact that it's Christmas, we all love Christmas yeah. anyway. Especially but, um, the build up to Christmas. Also, the excited. fact that it's Manchester, we love yeah. a bit of Manchester. Yes. I feel like it's kind of our second home. Definitely. So, yeah, looking forward to it. And Manchester's very own girl band, the Piccadillys, made their first major public appearance. Well, we're always, I'm always at the Draft Centre. <laughs> <laughs> Shopping, yeah, but yeah, I love it. Love coming and watch the, all like, the act and everything, yeah. Despite being the earliest illumination display to be held in the region, the switch on certainly set the bar for all the other festive events yet to come. Carly Foster, Keys TV News. The spirit of Halloween is lasting at least another four weeks for one Charlton Bar as they display Greater Manchester's biggest pumpkin, weighing in at 16 and a half stone. Gemma Hacking investigates. I'm 
here at Juan Sanchez, a Spanish tapas bar in Charlton, where tonight a 16 and a half stone pumpkin is being carved and displayed. I caught up with its proud owner. When did you realise that this pumpkin was slightly different to other pumpkins that you have grown? Um, probably around the middle of August, the pumpkin itself set around the mid-July, but um, I'd gone away on a course, come back and it was growing. I could see it had been away three or four days and I really could see the difference in the rate of growth. Um, it was looking pretty big then. Do you think there was something different this year that made it grow much larger? It's been very, very warm and mild. Um, I set the seed off slightly earlier than usual. I'd go for mid-March, but a couple of weeks earlier in the start of March and um, it's just been so mild. Do you have any tips for any other gardeners out there who, who want to grow themselves a rather large pumpkin? Um, you, you've got to have the right seed and the seed can cost an absolute fortune. Um, you have to have a variety called Atlantic Giant. You can get that in most most shops. After that, it's up to you how specialised you go. Obviously, I've seen, you've got two pumpkins here, and they're both rather large. Is everything you grow big? Um, no, but when you I do I started doing large cabbages, so <laughs> after a bit, it becomes a little bit samey. So uh, challenging things like super hot chilies and things which take ages to grow and otherwise you know you can grow a lot but after a bit I have to admit it does start to become a bit the same so you look for new challenges I think I think that's why people start doing things like this really. It's been a pumptastic evening here at Juan Sanchez and it's been a smashing effort from all involved. The pumpkin will be on display for the next few weeks and make sure you keep an eye out for next year's contender. Gemma Crozier reporting for Keys TV News. Now, Tom Percival is not reviewing a horror film today, but he was horrified by what he watched on this big screen. Uh, our film expert is talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, Tom, was it really that bad? Well, Harry, let me start by asking, were you a fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Uh, not, not so much. I never really watched it. No, really, that surprised me. I find a lot of people in the early 20s, you know, they quite enjoyed it back in the 90s. Ah, as you might have guessed. By the hat, it? yeah. By the hat, yeah. <laughs> I'm a massive fan. I collected the toys. My first birthday cake was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cake. Wow. I even know the theme tune now, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> you know, it's really stayed with me. And I, as I say, I really believe that it stayed with a lot of people, you know, born yeah. in the 90s, 80s. And um, I've got bad news for you if you go and see this film. It's taken everything you liked about the original Turtles, taken it away and replaced it with this really strange, sour tasting cynicism. I mean, it takes everything that was nice about the original Turtles, raises them to extreme levels. Absolutely. You know, Donatello goes from good, being good at machines to only talking in technical jargon. Michelangelo goes from being lovable and a bit goofy to an absolute idiot. It does that, and I'm afraid it's more of the same. And I, I, want, I don't want to blame Michael Bay for this because he didn't direct it. It mm. was directed by Jonathan Liebesman. But he did produce, and his fingers are all over this. I mean, yeah. you've got your typical Bayisms, as you would. Yeah, absolutely. Explosions, collateral damage, violence. Oh, that's one thing as well. And I am very aware this is becoming a rant now. And I don't want it to become a rant, <laughs> but it is, isn't it? The problem is, the turtles themselves, they've lost all that natural charisma they had. I mean, I know they are giant turtles, so they're always going to be yeah. a bit scary, especially absolutely. when they try and make them look more realistic as they have in this film. But they're six foot monsters with yeah. samurai swords in this. Uh, so by the sounds of it, uh, you're not really a fan? Oh no, absolutely not. The tagline was totally awesome. Uh, my tagline would be turtle tripe. Total tripe, okay. Uh, anything else that you uh, did like or didn't like about well, I, it? Oh, something I did like was I could actually tell who the characters were, which was a step up from Transformers, where you're watching it and you're like, what, what's this? Am I watching screws going around in a tumble dryer? You know, like, absolutely. I, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Uh, anything else you'd like to say on the Absolutely. The if you do get a chance, go see Babadook. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Well worth it. Tom, thank you very much for joining me in the studio. Uh, Jenny, back over to you. In the week that UK Sport opened discussions about Olympic funding, local sport in Manchester has given a fresh boost with the opening of a new leisure centre in Beswick. Lewis Smith has more. Beswick is now the proud new owner of the most recent piece of Olympic legacy following the opening of a state-of-the-art £2 million leisure centre which sits in the sporting hub of the Etihad campus. Three, two, one. 
It's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, we've been dreaming of this moment for many, many years, and it's really important to the community that we've got a brand new facility that they can use. It's a community facility. East Manchester residents are the heart of the design of it, and they'll be the heart of it actually coming and using it. The centre is one of three being opened in the city, which are hoped to help put Manchester at the forefront of UK sport. And, and it's leading the way. A lot of other cities in the country are looking at what Manchester is doing, and they gain inspiration and they gain courage as well by by seeing that the success that Manchester's bringing. It was a it was a bold move to to get the Commonwealth Games back in 2002, and they've built through that through this 12-year journey. And it, the centre replaces an old facility at Miles Patting Pool, and for swimming teacher Brenda Devine, the change has come at the perfect time. But when I came here yesterday, it actually brought a tear to my eye when I saw it. I'll cry at adverts, you know, I'm just so soft. I was so emotional when I came and saw the size of it. Twelve years after a Manchester Commonwealth Games and two years after a home Olympics, fresh investment into sports facilities like these show that Manchester is really starting to make a splash. Lewis Smith, Keys TV News. Following Manchester City's victory over their red rivals at the weekend, people have started to ask the question, have United finally lost their grip as Manchester's dominant football force? The game certainly wasn't worth without its talking points and you've been giving us your opinions over Twitter. Absolutely. Uh, at Leon Knight 5 said, four in a row, that is United, laugh out loud. Uh, Lorraine Berry at Berry FLW sarcastically added, real MUFC class, Van Gaal being blames Manchester derby loss on one player. No wonder your club's not coming together. I'll give you three guesses to name Lorraine's team there. Uh, again, for the neutrals, well, Kartik at IMGB said, Professional City versus Spirited United. Hashtag Manchester Derby was well fought. Mr Oliver, the referee, needs a special mention here. Further down the leagues, there were mixed fortunes for our non local non-league teams, Salford City. They were beaten 6-0 by Kendall Town. There was better news for FC United of Manchester, however, who progressed to the next round of the FA Trophy with a 2-0 win over Paddyham FC. Now, recently, we have been following the story of the dad who put his seven-month-old son's football allegiance up for sale. Would it be United? Would it be City? Well, the answer was neither. The winning bid was £190, and baby Eddie will now be sworn to support Stockport County. All proceeds will be donated to Charity Bliss, as well as the money raised on Dad Ian's donation page. The overall total fund raised is £526. It certainly is a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so, are you a football fan? Well, we kind of have to be, because in our family, every male has to go through the rite of passage. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now it's over to David with the weather. One. Well, today's a bit drier with fewer showers than we saw yesterday evening in Salford, and the sky should be staying clear for the rest of the day. Rain is unlikely to hit us over the next 36 hours or so, as it appears to be heading north from the coastal areas, not inland towards the city. It is feeling a bit chillier this week, with maximum temperatures of 12 Celsius. Tomorrow will be mostly dry, with light winds and sunny spells, but it will be a, a cold bonfire night, so wrap up warm if you are off out to any displays. We'll probably be waking up to some frost on Thursday morning, and then winds will increase with rain arriving later on in the day and showers are likely to continue into Friday. If you have a kick for karaoke then you'll love what Keys Culture has in store. Naturally Bradley Harris has offered his services. Brown, wooden and square. It may look simple but to Keys Culture this is the latest innovation in karaoke technology. It is, uh, it's extremely fun, that's the first thing, I mean you go in, who doesn't like karaoke? You go in and you, you know, you can sing along, it's soundproof, I'm a terrible singer but you go in, sing along, nobody can hear you, um, it's kind of like singing in the shower in that respect and it becomes a very moving experience towards the end because I say you finish this song, you've almost got this run of adrenaline because you've just had a karaoke session on your own where you can really let loose. The Soldiers song is an 18-month development where Soldiers have been filmed singing classic karaoke songs, offering the public to sing along with them inside a soundproof booth. Did you like it? Over the past few days, people have been coming in and out of this box, literally putting their vocals to the test. Now, of course, this wouldn't be a Keys News broadcast if I didn't go in and put my vocals to the test. So let's see if I can sing with a Soldier. Wish me luck. <laughs> Okay, let's unleash my inner voice. Okay. Touching me, touching you. I'd 
Uh, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.